Strauss and Company is delighted to be handling a museum grade selection of works by John Mafangeo, all from the Ord Levinson collection. The Levinson name is synonymous with Namibian art history and this group has been put together over a lifetime. The sale includes 115 liner cuts, two etchings, as well as, remarkably, 36 original lino blocks, all from the artist's estate. John's work is infused with humour, social realism, history, and of course, bucket loads of charm, and we are incredibly excited uh, to be bringing this collection to the market. The best known fact about John Mafangeju's life is that he studied printmaking at the Evangelical Lutheran Arts and Crafts Centre at Rolks Drift under Isaria Mabatu in 1968-69. His studies were interrupted by him being hospitalised for mental health reasons, but he completed the course in 1970, returning to St Mary's Mission School in Namibia to teach printmaking for four years. It was Archdeacon Mallory at St Mary's who was instrumental in applying on Mafangeju's behalf to Peter Groenivenes, the director at Rolksdrift, for a scholarship at the centre. After Mafangeju's father's death in 1955, his mother took the family from the little village Etunda in Angola, where John was born in 1943, to St Mary's in Odibu, Namibia. Mafangeja was back at Rolks Drift as an artist in residence in 1974 and exhibited at the African Art Centre in Durban in 1975, but returned to Namibia in 1977, settling permanently at Katatura Township just outside Vintuk, where he died in 1987. He visited Finland in 1981, a trip that possibly united him with his erstwhile teacher Azaria Mabata, who had been living in Sweden since 1970. Mafangejo received early recognition for his outstanding printmaking, representing South Africa at the Sao Paulo Biennale in 1971, the Museum of African Art in Washington, D.C. in 1974, and the Brooklyn Museum of Art in New York in 1976. During the 1980s, his work was exhibited regularly in the United Kingdom, Finland and Germany. He was guest artist at the National Arts Festival in Grahamstown in 1987, the year of his death. John Mafangeo travelled fairly extensively in what is now Namibia, in South Africa, and on a number of occasions to Europe, the UK and Scandinavia, much of this made possible by the Swedish missionaries who ran the Art and Craft Centre at Rorks Drift. Wherever he was, he usually depicted something of his experiences in his artworks, keenly observing the life and the people around him. With his typical candour, social commentary and engaging sense of humour, he recorded his travel experiences in lino cuts such as British Airways, travelling by plane, holidays, travelling by bus, and from Finland a small ship was going to small island. My favourite is Snow was making the artist fall down twice in Finland, 1981. Mifungei often represented a place by its most striking element, as after a visit to Finland, he carved this delightful work. He depicts the artist, himself in the foreground, having fallen flat on his back, one arm and one striped trousered leg stiffly and comically up in the air. He brilliantly limits the scene with its upright bare trees and overhanging branches, and he leaves us with no vanishing point, just the flat white background everywhere, so aptly capturing the snow. Like the Cubists, he also eliminates the vanishing points as he concentrates his attention on the subject of the work, in this case, snow. John Mafange is one of the best lino cut printmakers, and here with me I have an example of his lino cut plate and the final print. And I'm just going to take you through the process of the lino printing, printing technique and I'm going to show you how we got from here to here. So to get this final print, you get this traditional plate, uh, lino traditional pl plate and you carve out uh, whatever you want to be white on this paper. So what we have here is the black and white print and whatever is white here is what was uh, carved out using sharp 
tools uh, 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 on this plate. After carving out on this plate, you apply ink on the, on the plate. So after applying the ink on the plate, you put the paper onto the, the plate and you run it through the press and the ink will, will be transferred from the plate to the paper and you will get this as the final result. Now John Mafangier was one of the artists that wanted to be understood and he would usually narrate what is happening in his artwork through text. And to get the text readable in a print is almost difficult because what you get in the final print is a mirror image of what is carved on the, the plate. So what is carved here has to be reversed and so that you get it positive on the, the plate. Usually we see the final artwork, but we don't see the process and the technique of the artist. And it has been a pleasure to show you the process and the technique and how we got from this plate to this final print. An early influence is his experiences with the Kwanyama tribe. The liner cuts reveal his awareness of the tribe, the social duties, relationships, and the kingship with his rules of succession. In the print, Kwanjama Kings, Manduma, who is Mafaniego's favorite king, is shown in profile, linking the past kings to the present. The tribe also made Mafaniego very receptive to biblical stories, with strong themes of holiness, Adam and Eve, and Christ. He draws on day-to-day -day scenes and his vision of African life in simple and static ways, such as in the work A Good Family in Uvambo, while others are more complex and dynamic. In the work A Rich Man, there is a mass of disorderly cattle shown from various angles. Owning cattle is a sign of wealth, and he overlaps them in a cubist technique, showing what one knows about the object rather than what is seen from a single glance. The pile of cattle seems to say something about how the rich man must not only amass, but continuously take care of his possessions. Mafaniego looked after cattle in his early years, and through this, he became aware of animals, their beauty, and their danger. In A Strong Man is Strangling an African Lion, he links man and animal, matching their strength through the dynamic representation of the intertwined figures. In these works, he depicts the tenderness and respect for both animal and human life, showing that we are not so different in Africa. The church is another prominent theme in his line of cuts, but the portrayal of friends and services that hold significance to him and his life. Each of his line of cuts are a masterpiece, which all go towards his title of a truly great artist. The narrative featured throughout each tells us the story of Mafaniego himself, his philosophy of life and his experiences. African Lion, John Mafangeo works from the Ord Levinson collection, opens on Monday the 26th of April at 8 a.m. and it closes the following Monday the 3rd of May at 8 p.m. It offers a sweeping overview of this remarkable artist's trailblazing, award-winning and trend-setting career.